Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It is a beautiful morning and a blessed morning to be in God's house. We certainly hope and pray that our time together will be a blessing to all and visitors that we have with us. We certainly welcome you and hope and pray that your time with us will be a blessing to you. As far as announcements, uh, I have none other than those that are listed. I uh, hope everyone has their glasses ready for tomorrow. No? I see head shaking. Don't look up then. Uh, I guess. First of all, I just, I'd like to say thank you to all who came yesterday to, for the work day here at the church meeting. A very good group of people and uh, I think much was accomplished. We will have Holy Communion during the service today. Uh, there will be no Bible study this week. And that is mainly because Pastor Tina will be on vacation this week. Uh, the Reverend Ruth Ward will be on standby for any emergencies. There's phone numbers there to contact if need be. The office will be open on Wednesday, regular hours. Are there any other announcements that I'm missing? Or anyone has. We will begin our worship. If you are able, would you rise and join with me responsibly in our call to worship? How shall we live when shadows gather? Drawn to God's unquenchable light, we are also drawn into one another's presence. What was hidden has been revealed. We are woven together with all creation. When we live in the light, as God is in the light, we are one with each other. Let us worship God, who is our light and our salvation. Let us receive the blessings that are all around us. Let us pray responsibly the prayer that is on the screen. Behold how good and pleasant it is when we live together in unity. It is like the precious oil upon the head, running down upon the beard, upon the beard of Aaron, running down on the collar of 
his friends. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord has commanded the blessing, life forevermore. Our opening hymn this morning is, Shall We Gather in the River? <clears throat>
lessons for this morning are taken first from the Old Testament, the book of Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, verses 12 and 13. I know that there is nothing better for them than to be happy and enjoy themselves as long as they live. Moreover, it is God's gift that all should eat and drink and take pleasure in all their toil. And our New Testament scripture this morning is from the book of 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, verses 12 through 16. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit that is from God, so that we may understand the gifts bestowed on us by God. And we speak of these things in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit. Interpreting spiritual things to those who are spiritual. Those who are unspiritual <coughs> do not receive the gifts of God's Spirit. For they are, they are foolishness to them, and they are unable to understand them, because they are spiritually discerned. <coughs> Those who are sp spiritual discern all things, and they are themselves subject to no one else's scrutiny. For who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? <clears throat> but we have the mind of Christ. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Grace and peace to you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. It is good to be in worship this morning, a nice sunny day finally, um, after a long week of rain. Um, a little bit cold though, I did see some frost driving into Shippensburg this morning. Not so much out here, but um, it is cold. A couple of additional announcements. Um, there is, if you notice, there, may, there are a few slight changes to our order of worship. We're going to try some new things out. See if you like them. If you don't, let me know. We're going to try things out for a couple of weeks, and we can always change them back if you don't. The biggest thing that you'll prob probably notice is that I will be saying the prayer of dedication alone. You will not be saying that with me, so there wouldn't be a slide for that. Um, other than that, there, there are just some other minor changes. There, um, there is... A concert coming up on April 27th for the Chambersburg Town Singers, which will be at Christ United Methodist Church on April 27th. I just brought a poster in this morning, so we'll put that up on the bulletin board for you. Um, I think that was all I had. Alrighty, will you bow your heads for a word of prayer? Almighty God, open our eyes and our minds to your word. And fill us with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I think every good Christian knows that it's better to give than to receive, right? I mean, we repeat this over and over again at Christmas time or any time we embark on mission work. And this comes, of course, from the book of Acts, chapter 20, verse 35, where the Apostle Paul tells us that Jesus himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And I think most of us truly believe this. We have seen firsthand in our lives what happens when we bless others. We know the, the powerful emotions and feelings of fulfillment that can come from serving. Even missionaries often say that they gain more than they give. Now there are countless opportunities for us to serve and give. We can serve or tithe at the church. We can feed the hungry in a number of ways. We can volunteer at a food bank. We could volunteer at Shippensburg Produce and Outreach or the food bank at St. Paul. 
We could volunteer for Meals on Wheels. We can clothe the naked, as it says in Scripture, by donating clothes to Katie's Place, Goodwill, or the Newburgh United Methodist Church clothing bank. We can serve those in prison by becoming a pen pal, a mentor, or a visitor in prison ministry. We can minister to the sick by visiting them in the hospital or preparing meals or sending cards or offering rides to the doctors. Now, some of us are really good at service and generosity. Others of us might need a little bit of encouragement from time to time. But I think we can all agree as Christians that that is what we are called to do. Whether or not people pay us back, whether or not people come into our church as a result of our generosity, we are called to give and serve. But why is it that when someone tries to offer us generosity, for some of us, maybe it's not true for you, maybe it's just me, why is it that my first reaction is often to reject it? If I'm cold and shivering at an outdoor event and some random stranger offers me their coat, I am almost going to immediately respond, no thanks, I'm good, without even thinking about it. And if I'm at a pop-up or a restaurant and someone offers me the last piece of dessert, I will almost always say, no thanks, I'm good. And what about if it's raining outside and someone offers you their umbrella, or maybe even just a ride to your car? Do you accept it, or do you just grin and say, no thanks, I'm good? Maybe your answer depends on how well you know the other. But the fact is that a lot of us are more comfortable doling out generosity than receiving it. That's certainly true for me. And when I think about it, it's true about both earthly gifts and heavenly ones. I visited a church in the Caribbean where the pastor, during every single worship, emphasized the fact that we are here in the sanctuary to receive. That's our job. To receive whatever God has for us today. Do we come to church expecting to receive anything? You know what this pastor did during the worship service? He actually invited everyone up out of their seats who wanted to receive on that Sunday. And they would get together in this sports-like huddle with all their hands in the middle. And the pastor would pray over them to receive an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. You wouldn't believe the number of people who came forward. They all wanted to receive from the Lord. <coughs> I was so impressed with that part of the service. Because, you know, I know the Bible tells us that we need to pray to receive on a regular basis. But those folks, they not only prayed, they got up out of their seats and stood together in solidarity, expecting an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. That congregation showed me what it really meant to receive. And I started to wonder, why is it that I often have so much difficulty receiving both earthly and heavenly gifts? I once heard a pastor say that as Christians, we have to first learn how to receive before we can give. We have to receive Christ before we will be equipped to share Christ. I think so many of us get that backwards. We think we first have to do good deeds, and then we can receive Christ. So I feel like maybe having a problem accepting generosity, and at the same time having a hard time accepting the gifts of Jesus, can be the same root issue. So I feel like maybe the church needs to do a better job helping people learn how to receive. We need to teach people how to accept and truly feel in the deepest depths of their soul the love that God has for each one of us. We know God loves us. We know God is forgiving. We know Jesus offers salvation. But you know, some days, I just don't feel it. Does anybody else struggle with this? Why is that? Why is it hard to receive God's love? Because maybe we feel like we don't deserve it. Or maybe we feel like we're not worthy. 
think many of us don't feel fully accept Jesus' love and forgiveness because we have trouble loving and forgiving ourselves. Maybe we feel shame or guilt about something from our past. Maybe we feel unaccomplished in our current situation. Or maybe we have a negative outlook on our future. And whenever we find ourselves in this frame of mind, it's hard to feel loved by anyone. Not by ourselves, not by our family, and especially not by God. And it's in those times that we make the incorrect conclusion that we're not worthy of God's love. And this puts us in a position where the only thing preventing God's love from getting to us is ourselves. And even though God's love is not based on our good deeds, even though God's love is a gift free for the taking, we reject it. We say, no thanks, I'm good. Perhaps another reason that some of us reject generosity is that it helps us stay in control. Think about it. Have you ever been out to lunch with a friend and found yourself fighting over the check? If someone offers to pick up the tab, the other person almost always says, no way, you're not paying for me. Why? <coughs> because whoever pays is in control. And the other person is in their debt, even if we don't say they are. One person is the winner, and the other person is the loser. Allowing someone else to pick up your check means you must give up control. We don't like to give up control, do we? But what does the Bible say about control? Proverbs 3, 5. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him. And he will make your path straight. Mature Christians know how to give up control and allow God to be in the driver's seat. When we reject the love of Jesus, we're rejecting God being in control. We're allowing our own pride to say, I control my life. No one else is in charge but me. No thanks. I'm good. But by doing that, we are taking away God's chance to bless us. And we're not putting ourselves in a position to receive. Our Old Testament lesson this morning talked about receiving blessings from God. Our New Testament lesson talked about receiving the Holy Spirit and receiving the gifts of the Spirit, and receiving discernment. How many of us have truly claimed those gifts for themselves? These promises, these great promises of Scripture. How many of us can say that we receive those things in church every single Sunday? How many of us have ever received any of it, really and truly? Perhaps it's not so much that the gifts aren't there, but that we don't know how to receive them. The truth is, God wants to give us these gifts far more than we are willing to receive. Because our knee-jerk reaction says, no thanks, I'm good. And that can actually be an unhealthy form of pride and self-sabotage. Similarly, when we reject the generosity of our family, our friends, our neighbors, our co-workers, we are robbing them of the opportunity to bless us. Have you ever thought about it that way? Do we really want to rob others of the chance of blessing us? Are you a blessing thief? I know I've been a blessing thief plenty of times. I'm going to give you a few examples of what that looks like. How about this? When someone compliments you on your outfit, do you simply say thank you? Or do you say, what? This old thing? I've had this for years. Yeah. I think women are especially guilty of this. I have a hard time with compliments. I almost always refute them. I am so quick to criticize myself. But what I'm really doing, if I really think about it, is I'm rejecting the compliment. It's as if I'm telling them they're wrong, like I'm correcting them for making a mistake. That reaction.
action does not express gratitude or thanksgiving for the blessing that was offered. It's not a God-honoring response. I'm actually stealing someone else's opportunity to bless me. How about in our relationships? It is especially easy to become a blessing thief with those who live with us. When your family member offers to do something for you, do you graciously accept their offer of help? Or do you complain and just say, I'll do it myself. You wouldn't do it right away, or you wouldn't do it the right way. That reminds me of a story in the New Testament where Jesus tried to preach in his hometown. You remember that? He tried to preach in his hometown to those who knew him and grew up with him and lived with him. But he was rejected. It was as if they were saying to Jesus, no thanks, we're good. So Jesus left. And he went to perform miracles and healings in other places for other people. I wonder... What if those who lived with him and lived around him had instead humbled themselves, listened to him, and accepted what he had to offer? Think about all the blessings they might have received. Or how about this? When you are sick or hospitalized, do you allow people to check in on you, visit you, bring your family a meal? If you have surgery, do you allow others to pray for you? Or what about this? lay hands on you? Or do you avoid people that you're telling people that you're having surgery? Because you don't want them to worry. You know, I've heard so many instances where people tell me something and they say, well, I didn't tell my older, elderly family member because I didn't want them to worry. But you know, when you keep silent about your own needs, that's robbing others of the opportunity to pray for you to bless you. My next example is from something that happened to me about nine years ago or so. I went on a retreat called the Walk to Emmaus, and the church I was attending sent, it, sent groups all the time. And that year I was the only person from my church to attend, so I was feeling a little lonely and a little afraid when I got there. I didn't know what to expect. And when I first arrived, two ladies came up to me and they said, we're going to take your bags to your room. They didn't ask. They told me. And I said, of course, no thanks. I'm good. I'm used to carrying my own bags. I'm a strong, perfectly capable human being. I never use the bellhop when I go to a hotel. Why would I let a complete stranger carry my bags? But these ladies were insistent. They wouldn't take no for an answer. And before I could reject them again, they stared at me with these intense eyes. And it sounds kind of strange when I try to describe it, but their faces suddenly had this warmth and countenance that was unnerving to me. And I was unexpectedly overwhelmed by their simple act of kindness. <gasps> and in that moment, I couldn't say no. And it was their simple insistence of generosity actually broke me a little. It's kind of hard to explain. I was forced to let down a wall in order to let them in. And I wasn't prepared for that. Emotionally, I was always used to being strong and self-reliant. But in order to allow them to bless me, I needed to be the exact opposite. I had to be vulnerable, submissive, and not the one in control scared me. I had to let go of my pride. But when I gave in and gave up control, that allowed the blessings to come. And it was in that moment that I was able to suddenly feel the love of Christ in an unexpected way. It was as if Jesus himself was saying to me, here, let me carry your bags. Both literally and figuratively. Jesus was telling me to open the door to him. Jesus was showing me that I had been shutting him out more than I realized. And God was telling me that I was the only person getting in the way of me receiving God's love. And it was then that I decided that refusing generosity is just plain stupid. So what if they win? So what if you have to bring down your emotional walls? It is so worth it. 
You know, it's really funny because about a year ago, almost the same thing happened to me, but it was when I was on my seminary immersion trip in the Caribbean, and when we first arrived, we had just gotten back from the airport, we were taken to our host church, we were given our apartment assignments, which were about a block away from the church, and we grabbed our little piece of paper with the number on it, and we grabbed our bags, and we started walking, and all of a sudden, this big, tall man comes up and says, let me, tries to grab my bags, he didn't say let me, because he only spoke Spanish, and I don't speak Spanish, and he didn't speak English. And so we couldn't communicate verbally. He was offering to take my bags. I didn't even know who he was. I thought maybe he was somebody just trying to steal my things. What do I know? You know, before I left on my trip, my mother said, don't ever let your passport out of your sight. Don't let your ID out of your sight. And don't let your money out of your sight. So of course I was thinking all of these things. And it was only later that I realized that the gentleman who'd offered to carry my bags was a well-respected member of the church we were being hosted by. I had done it again. I felt so awful when I realized who it was. I had rejected another person's offer of generosity. And I felt like God in that moment was reminding me of all the times that I forgot how to receive. You know, it's been a gradual process. I'm still learning how to accept generosity. But I try now to say thank you when I get a compliment. I try to allow others to pick up the check when I'm at a restaurant. And I tell others how they can be in prayer for me when I'm feeling it. But most importantly, I try to let Jesus in more frequently. That can be the hardest thing sometimes. You know, I once read a book that helped with this problem. The author said that whenever you feel like you're, you're blocking your own blessings, that you're blocking Jesus out, you can pray this simple prayer. He said, you close your eyes, you open your arms wide, you lift your chin to heaven, and you say, Lord, today I will let you love me. That can be hard to pray sometimes, but sometimes that's what we need. And I think it's the perfect prayer to help us receive whatever God has to give us. You know, rejecting generosity does three things. It prevents us from receiving what we need. It offends the person who's offering. And it turns us into a blessing thief. And every time I think about it that way, I change my mind. I really do want to be blessed. I really do want others to feel good when they extend generosity to me. And I really do want to feel the love of Jesus. So how about you? Are you a blessing thief? Are you subconsciously sabotaging your own opportunities to be blessed? Will you give up control, humble yourself, and allow others to win the battle of generosity? When we let down our emotional walls and let others into our hearts, we also open the door to, Lord, to the Lord Jesus. The good news is that we get to choose every single day we can decide whether to be a blessing thief or a blessing multiplier. Every day, we get the opportunity to say, Lord Jesus, I will let you love me. You know, one way to learn how to receive is to pray in a posture of receiving. And so as I offer our closing prayer this morning, I invite you to close your eyes and place your hands open and facing upwards in your laps. That is a way to pray in a posture that says, I am ready to receive, Lord, whatever you have for me. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you are amazing and wonderful and good. You protect us and love us and show us how to live a good life. We are your children and we love you. So Lord, help us to get out of our own way. Help us to let go of pride. Help us to break down our emotional walls and let you and others in. Lord, we want to feel your love in a real and powerful way. We want to know without a shadow of a doubt just how much you love us. 
And so we ask that you help us receive whatever it is you have for us today. A word, a vision. What gift do you have? Lord God, I pray for a double portion of your spirit to fall down on each person here this morning. I say yes and amen, and I pray that we receive now with gladness. Thank you, Lord, for what you've already done, what you're still doing, and what you will do in the future. In the name of Jesus, amen. I now invite you to stand as you are able and join in our hymn of response, Christ for whom all blessings are number 550. <laughs>
short this water resident uh, from last name is, but anyhow, she um, has stage four stomach cancer, uh, inoperable, and she's in a lot of pain. So let's pray. for my family as we'll be traveling to Buffalo later this afternoon, so I pray for safe travels and the hedge of protection. Let us go to God in prayer. Creator God, maker and sustainer of all life, you draw water from the highest limestone crest to fill the deepest mountain spring. You have made us, the world, and everything in it, and we praise your glorious name. Forgive us, Lord, for the times that we gather around your waters to drink all that you have given, but have not been one people. We have jostled and shoved, we have taken so much, we have made suffering where you have offered life. And we know that you are forgiving and abounding in steadfast love. Lord, we pray for all of those suffering or in pain this day. We pray that you would strengthen them, comfort them, and bring them hope. Lord, hear our prayers, the prayers of your people, as we spend a moment in silent prayer. blessing of everlasting life. And we kneel at the foot of your waterfall. We are in the midst of your oasis and we drink at the pool of the wellspring, breathing in your spirit mist. We share this life with our neighbors and with your whole creation, one world, one community, one everlasting life. Help us to receive your blessings this day. We'll continue in our worship with sharing of our tithes and our offerings. Can we ask you to please come forward?
word brings life into our lives. May our giving be an act of generosity, a reflection of the abundance of your grace and love. We thank you for the forgiveness and grace offered through your Son, Jesus Christ. And as we give, may we also steward these gifts wisely for the betterment of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.